The landscape surrounding Amherst College is the result of Earth's continents moving over hundreds of millions of years. Let's begin by going back in time to 500 million years ago, or MA for short. The number in the upper left corner tracks time before the present day in millions of years. The time scale at the bottom of the screen tracks time visually. The upper bar depicts the last 542 million years, only a fraction of Earth's 4.5 billion year history, which is represented by the lower bar. The star follows the present day location of Amherst. As we step back in time, follow the star to see how the present day location of Amherst has changed through the past 500 million years. Five hundred million years ago, the configuration of continents was very different than it is now, and North America was covered in a shallow sea near the equator. As you can see, Earth changed considerably in the last five hundred million years. We will note the major changes as we return to the present. Four hundred forty million years ago, the Appalachian Mountains began to form due to the collision of North America and other smaller continental landmasses. Over time, North America collided with more and more continental landmasses, and the Appalachian Mountains grew in height. 250 million years ago, all of the continents collided together, forming a supercontinent called Pangaea. At this point, the Appalachian Mountains, including the hills around Amherst that you can see from the windows in the Bineski Museum, were as tall as the Himalaya are today, nearly 20,000 feet above sea level. The Appalachian Mountains maintained their Himalayan heights until 220 million years ago when Pangaea began to break up. The continents split apart, creating rift valleys, and eventually the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. We are back at the present day and have seen how Earth's continents have moved over the past 500 million years, ultimately creating the landscapes we see today. But how do Earth's continents move? And how has the movement of continents shaped the landscape of the Connecticut River Valley? The Earth comprises different layers that are made of different materials. Continents are part of Earth's outermost layer, the crust. The crust is part of the lithosphere, the rigid shell that surrounds the soft, gooey, and viscous asthenosphere beneath. The lithosphere is broken up into different pieces that geologists refer to as tectonic plates, which move in relation to one another. This map shows how Earth's tectonic plates are currently arranged. Here in Amherst, you are standing on the North American plate. In some places, the plates are moving toward each other. These are called convergent plate boundaries. The diagram shows a convergent plate boundary where one plate sinks or subducts beneath the other. It is this sinking or subduction that ultimately drives the motion of tectonic plates. Convergent plate boundaries create large mountains. A present day example are the Himalaya, Earth's tallest mountains, which are continually growing as the Indian plate collides with the Asian plate. Between 400 and 250 million years ago, the Appalachian Mountains were forming due to continental collision, and they were the size that the Himalaya are now, approximately 20,000 feet above sea level. In the other places, the plates are moving away from each other. These are called divergent plate boundaries. This diagram shows a divergent plate boundary where two plates separate and magma flows up between them to form new crust. Divergent plate boundaries create rift valleys and then oceans. Today in Iceland, the divergence of the European and North American plates makes a valley filled with fault scarps and fractures. Amherst lies in a former rift valley, which formed 200 million years ago during the breakup of the Pangaea supercontinent and the opening of the Atlantic Ocean. Both convergent and divergent plate boundaries can create volcanoes. Explosive stratovolcanoes, such as Mount St. Helens, occur in convergent plate boundaries. More effusive volcanoes form in divergent plate boundaries, but most of these volcanoes today erupt on the ocean floor. Volcanoes in both convergent and divergent plate settings have erupted in the Amherst area, forming the rocks that lie beneath our feet. Igneous rocks exposed at Shelburne Falls crystallized from magma deep beneath a volcanic island that formed during plate convergence 475 million years ago. Later on, 200 million years ago, during the breakup of Pangaea, a lava flow formed the volcanic rocks that make up the summits of the Holyoke Range. 
Mountains and valleys, like those surrounding Amherst College and the Vineski Museum, are ultimately created by the movement of tectonic plates over millions to billions of years. They are further shaped through erosion by rivers and glaciers on shorter time scales. Geologists like those in the Amherst College Geology Department conduct scientific research to learn more about these processes and how they have shaped and continue to shape planet Earth.